After a three and a half hour train ride from Paris, the Pittsburgh Symphony arrived in Cologne, Germany to check in just a few blocks from Cologne Cathedral. Construction on the cathedral began in 1248. It is Germany's most visited landmark with over 20,000 guests each day. It has the largest facade of any church in the world. The great twin spires are said to have been used as an easily recognizable landmark by Allied aircraft during the latter years of the war, which may be a reason that the cathedral was not destroyed. At the base of Cologne Cathedral, tourists visit one of Germany's great museums of contemporary art, the Museum Ludwig, which featured a large exhibit of paintings by British-born David Hockney. After the museum, it's just a few steps to buy cologne in Cologne, especially fragrance 4711, invented in 1792 and said to be John F. Kennedy's favorite fragrance. Nikolai Snyder provided a sweet and penetrating air in Jean Sibelius' violin concerto. Nikolai Snyder was delighted to tour with the Pittsburgh Symphony. When he wasn't playing Sibelius and Bach encores, he sat in with the strings. I think we managed to do what the composer wanted, which is always the, that's our job in the end. So he seemed happy, then we did our job well. The Philharmonie is the home of several orchestras in Cologne. It was built in 1986. After Stephen Stuckey's Silent Spring and Dvorak's Ninth Symphony, plus three encores by Bizet, Kachatorian, and Dvorak, a crowd gathered at Manfred Honeck's dressing room to say Fabelhaft and Wunderbar. The Philharmonie backstage bar poured a glass of Cologne's unique beer, Kulsch, for every thirsty member of the orchestra. In the morning, it was back on the bus to Frankfurt. <laughs> Pittsburgh Symphony arrived in Frankfurt amid the skyscrapers of Germany's banking center, including the fourth largest German bank, Deutsche Zentral. Hotel TV choices included Jeremy Kyle, modeled on the Jerry Springer show. Switching off the TV, it was probably best to get some fresh air with just a few hours before concert time. The orchestra strolled a few blocks to find a light meal or look into shopping at the Galleria Kaufhof while church bells tolled for evening services. A Frankfurt saxophonist offered entertainment his way. The old opera in Frankfurt was built in 1880 in a city center occupying a city block. It was almost completely destroyed at the end of the Second World War and rebuilt, opening in 1981. Above the front entrance, a dedication, De Waren Schönen Guten, to the true, the beautiful, and the good. Manfred Honeck and the Pittsburgh Symphony lived up to the challenge with three encores, Bizet, Kachaturian, and Dvorak. It was on the road again the next morning for a rainy two and a half hour ride to Stuttgart and the Liederhalle, where a statue of Franz Schubert stands outside the concert hall named for Beethoven. Stuttgart heard the Tchaikovsky Symphony No. 5.
tour sponsor Thomas Brandt, the Geschäftsleiter for BNY Mellon in Germany, knew of the orchestra's long association with the Mellon name. Well, as you may know, there's a long history between uh, Mellon uh, and, the, and the Bank of New York Mellon supporting the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra. This is personally my sixth time, my sixth year that I'm with you, and uh, it's the second time that I'm here in Stuttgart. And uh, clients like it, we the employees like it, so it's a great pleasure for us to be a supporting sponsor of the, of the concert. It was three encores, including the flute solo from principal flute Lorna McGee in Bizet. And Cacciatorian's Gallop from Masquerade, where Michael Wusenick improvised a solo cadenza, offering a few notes from Haydn's tune for the German national anthem. It was Auf Wiedersehen Deutschland, and on to the final stop for the Pittsburgh Symphony in Luxembourg.